Hey, how you doing? Hey, just in case you're joining me for the very first time, I am the one they call Brian Glaze Gibbs. On um, recently, I just did a IG live with Fat Man Scoop. Um, shout out to Fat Man Scoop. I appreciate the opportunity. And right now is listen, like some of the things that we spoke about. We spoke about an incident. And an incident that I spoke about, and you know, I got people like wanting to know more about this particular story. So right now was I know people get mad, say, look, man, why don't you, you know, get a little creative and add, like, you know, send a pitch into your video a certain way. Stop using your phone. You know what? Listen, until I get to that point, what I want you to understand is I am Brian Glaze Gibbs. I am not tech savvy. And right now, look, here it is. This is my message. Crime. Crime doesn't pay. This is my message. Get your t-shirt. Crime doesn't pay. And right now is, guess what? My story is my ministry. My story is my ministry. And right now is, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. And one of the stories that we're talking about, we're talking about this right here. These individuals right here. Okay, right now you see the Puerto Rican guy. That's rap. And you see the other guy. That's 50 Cent. And the notorious 50 Cent. So here it is. What we're talking about is, during that interview, he was asking me certain things about, you know, 50 Cent. Was 50 Cent who they say he was? And right now is, yeah, 50 Cent was who they say he was. 50 Cent was a little short guy. Um, Right now is, but he had a heart. Like, he, like you know what I'm saying? He was like five, what, three, five, two. But right now he had his heart like he was King Kong. You know, he's like a gorilla in the mist. And... The difference is right now, yeah, he went around, he terrorized. He terrorized people all in the five boroughs. And, you know, when you sit back and you look at it, here it is right now, what was the problem? Did he have a little man complex? Okay, sit back and look at it. When you look at it, an individual is so small, but yet and still he was so powerful. I can remember being a kid, and the first time I was bitten, you know, and I, I started feeling pain down, like, you know, my legs. So I look down and I see this little ant. And when I look at this little ant, and I'm saying to myself, how can this little ant, you know, right now is whatever they did, like bit me. How can that sucker hurt so much? The ant was just little. So the difference is right now, but it's very powerful. It's very painful. So that's what I'm saying. Like, even with that little individual, you know what I'm saying? The late 50 cent. Like when you sit back and you look at it, guess what? Here it is right now was he caused havoc and he did a lot of different things. And don't get me wrong. Like I said right now was, guess what? 50, like, you know, from my understanding right now, rap, rap practically raised 50. Okay. Rap was a little older. Rap both was like from the Fort Green section, Supreme Brother. So the difference right now is, you know, here it is. 50 had a lot of respect for rap. Because rap was, you know, quote unquote, the original OG. If you go to the Eric B and Rod Kim, their first album, you'll see like these guys on the back of that cover, along with, you know what I'm saying, Rod Kim and Eric B. So, but like you sit back and you look at it and you try to understand as far as that street and that hip hop culture, like how everything, like, you know, went hand in hand, how everybody life would rob, you know what I'm saying, revolve around one another. But in the same token, when you look at it, I know automatically that 50, you know what I'm saying, respected and fear rap at the same time. But in the same token, when you look at everything as a whole and some of the things that I made mention of the Fat Man Scoop interview was like when 50 died, when 50 was murdered, 50, I guess, knew that he was going to die. And right now was I had stopped messing and dealing with 50 Cent at the time, but I didn't know, like, what was his mindset or what was he really going through? Because I felt like, you know, before he died, months before he died, like he was trying to set me up to get killed. And I just backed away from him. I just kept away. Because once again, despite we grew up from kids, like he was five, I was six, and we was great friends. But as time went on, something went wrong, like the cross. When this man want to use me as a sacrifice and tried to set me up to get killed to save his own red and you know something's wrong. Okay, was he getting high? You know, something was going wrong upstairs because that individual, I didn't know him no more. So when he did, when he was murdered, you know what I'm saying, during October 87, 
And during that period of time, I was upset. I didn't go to his wake. I didn't go to his funeral. I stayed away from that whole situation, despite he was my friend. Most people feel, you know, even right now was, you know, at one point in time, yes. You know, if he was laying on the slab and I got the word, yeah, I would be ready to get my gun, ready to go to war, ready to go after the person that was responsible for it. But at that present time, we was in the speaking turn. I left him alone completely because I felt betrayal. So now at his weight, at his weight, when he laid up in the casket, as he laying up in the casket, dead, okay, murder. As he laid up and people coming there to pay their respect, you know what I'm saying? Rap got there. And when Rap got there, you know what I'm saying? And here it is, once again, this is Rap. And that's 50 Cent. When Rap got there and went and looked at him in his coffin, Rap hawked. Oh. I'm saying he hawked and he spit in 50 cent face in the casket. Sit back and look at it. Think about that. This man, like these guys, they was once, like I said, close. Look at the picture. Okay? That don't look like a picture of two enemies. These guys was once close. I know automatically that 50 love, respect, and fear rap. But yet and still, the day I'm talking about his death at his weight, rap, hawk, hawk, and spit on 50 Cent as he laid in his casket. What the heck can bring somebody to do something like that at somebody's weight, at somebody's funeral? You know what I'm saying? What went wrong? What happened? And from my understanding, rap was pissed off. What he was pissed off about, he was pissed off not that 50 was dead. He was pissed off because he wasn't the one that was responsible for putting 50 in that casket. That's what he was pissed off about. He was so upset because 50, allegedly, before he died, he stuck up rap brother for a Rolex watch. So to me, I didn't quite understand that move. And why I didn't quite understand that move? Because once again, I knew 50. I, okay, let me rephrase that. I thought I knew 50. So when you look at it and you sit back and you think about it, for him to go out to somebody, brother, or even right now, Prem, Prem highly respected. So for 50 to do what he did, something went wrong. Either he was getting hot, or he owed somebody a large sum of money, or he just didn't care. Or he knew he was going to die. Otherwise, right now is, you don't keep going against the grain. So, when you look at it, and you're trying to make sense of it, because even now I can't make sense of it. And as I was trying to explain to Fat Man Scoop, when rap, I'm saying OG against him, you know, right now is, went to the, pay his final respect. That's what he's supposed to be doing, paying his final respect. But you don't pay your final respect by hawking and spitting in a man as he lay in the casket. But like I say, once again, that's the sick world, disgusting world that we live in. We didn't respect anything. We didn't love anything. Most of us during that period of time, what we was in love with, we was in love with our family. We was in love with our wife, our kids. We was in love with our job. What we was in love with, the street. We love the street, and the street didn't love us back. And guess what? It came back and bite each and one of us in the red end, slowly but surely. It cost us time out of our life that we couldn't get back. We couldn't get back. And even right now, when you look at it right now, how can people grow up to be friends? And then as they go get older, they go their separate way, all because of that green stuff. All because of we fall in love with the wrong thing. We get caught up into the wrong thing. Listen, folks, that is not the way. We are better than that. And what we have to do is we have to love and respect one another. We have to learn to stop, you know what I'm saying, right now, being the enemy. We're not each other's enemy. We're not. What we need to do is how do we put our mindset together? How do we put our thoughts and ideal together? How do we build together? 
on a positive level. Stop destroying one another's life. That's what we need to do. Listen, check me out. I am Brian Glaze Gibb. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Listen, get your signed copy. It's all here. The Brian Glaze Gibb book, Beyond Lucky. Email me. B-R-I-A-N G-I-B-B-S 1201. Get your signed copy. Order your signed copy. This is the blueprint that will stop anybody that you love and care about. Stop them from making that multi-billion dollar prison system their permanent address. As I said it when I first started this, you see the shirt, crime doesn't pay. Crime doesn't pay. Let me hear you say, crime doesn't pay. Crime doesn't pay. Crime doesn't pay. Crime doesn't pay. It doesn't pay, y'all. We are better than that. We have to love each other. We have to teach one. We have to help one. We have to help them rebuild. We have to help them to empower one another. That's what life is all about. Let's stop destroying each other. We're not each other enemy, folks. And we have to do a better job. Listen, hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Like I say, I am not your typical minister. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the good. I'm going to give you the bad. I'm going to give you the ugly. Because I was once the problem. And now what I'm seeking to do, be part of the solution. So what I want everybody to do is listen, pray for me as I will pray for you. Right now is help me as I will help you. Y'all have anything that you want to discuss, anything that's worthwhile that I can utilize this platform and let it grow. That's what it's all about. This is not about me. This is not about you. This is how do we stop that madness? How do we save our kids? How do I save your kids? How do I save the future generation? This epidemic, this nonsense, this senseless behavior have to stop. This black on black crime have to stop, folks. We, as human beings, are better than that. I don't care where you're from. You can be from Mississippi. You can be from New Orleans. You can be from Kentucky. You can be from Alabama. You can be from any of those places. But it doesn't matter. Because all we are are a bunch of country bunking that migrated to New York. That migrated to, to you know what I'm saying, Chicago. Migrated to L.A. for a better life. And what we did is we became separate. But what we have to do is we have to come back together as one, as one whole, one love. Thank you. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Once again, my name is Brian Glaze Gibbs. Crime doesn't pay. If I can change, anybody can change. Because change comes from within.